to the leadership of the New Patriotic Party and the majority leadership and caucus of this House and to the minority caucus of the National Democratic Congress in Parliament. I thank you on your decision yesterday to participate fully in the process of passing this budget and to quote, you stressed how I could also mindful you are of the timeliness regarding the IMF negotiations and the crucial role a timely presentation of the 2023 budget will play in the advancement of Ghana's case in the negotiations with the fund. I thank you. I wish to assure this House of my strong commitment and unflinching cooperation in our collective efforts to secure an historic IMF program very soon, a program that would assist the country in its post-COVID recovery efforts. Our disagreements notwithstanding what should never be, especially in the eyes and ears of the general public, is our common desire to serve the Republic. Our democracy is richer for it. Let me quote Simon Bolivar. In the unity of our nation rests the glorious future of our peoples. But Mr. Speaker, the President of the Republic who is in Qatar enjoins us to remember Nehemiah when he said, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and will not be in disgrace. And the people replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began the good work. Mr. Speaker, the year 2022 will go down as one of the most difficult and eventful years in the economic history of our country, while we continue to deal with the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to significant reductions in our revenue and increased our expenditures enormously. We also have had to contend with the double jeopardy of the Russian-Ukraine war. What has resulted in unprecedented what has resulted in unprecedented global crisis, ravaging all currencies and historic living and inflation levels. In the midst of these really challenging times, Parliament has in many, many instances supported government's programs presented to this House, the eventual passage of the E Levy Act, the Fees and Charges Act, the Exemptions Act and the 750 million AFRI exim loan, among others. These attest to the support received from this august house. At the same time, the exceptional challenges that the electronic levy bill encountered months before it was passed also attest to the challenges that we must be mindful of going forward. Mr. Speaker, I also wish to express a deep appreciation of government to the various stakeholders, including employers, association, labor unions, civil society, faith-based organizations, Association of Ghana Industries, Ghana Union of Trade Association, bankers, academia, and think tanks in the media for the support we received throughout the year, as well as the inputs that have informed and enriched our policy choices. It is a speaker, when God's people live together in unity, the Lord bestows the blessings. Mr. Speaker, a year ago, I came to present a budget of significant revenue measures to tackle our fiscal difficulties, finance the transformative agenda of government, and sustain the post-COVID-19 recovery. However, what started as a political disagreement over revenue measures in this House triggered a series of events that significantly undermined the credibility of our budget, consequently leading to serious economic challenges as investor confidence hit a new low. This manifested in credit rating downgrades, which triggered the closure of Ghana's assets to international capital markets, tightening domestic financing conditions, and increasing cost of borrowing. The combined effects of the developments contributed to the rapid depreciation of the city and compounded the high debt service levels. Mr. Speaker, our inability to assess the international capital markets meant that for the first time in our administration, we did not have the foreign debt foreign currency to complement our foreign exchange earnings. We have had to make strenuous efforts to meet our import seized 10 billion annually, dollars annually. Considering our low foreign earnings, it has been difficult 
to meet our import requirements including crude oil and petroleum products of about $400 million a month. At the same time, Minister of Finance still needs to find about $1 billion annually to keep our lights in our homes and workplaces on. Mr. Speaker, the demand for foreign exchange to support our unbridled demand for imports undermines and weakens the value of the city. This contributed to the depreciation of the city, which has lost about 53.8% of its value since the beginning of this year. Compared to the average 7% annual depreciation of the city between 2017 and 2021. The current year's depreciation, which is driving the high cost of goods and services for everyone, is clearly an aberration and a very expensive one indeed. The increases in fuel prices, diesel currently above 20 cities a litre, and petrol 16.8 cities a litre, has led to increases in prices of most goods and services. Inflation, which we managed to bring down from 15.4%, at the end of 2016 to 7.9% at the end of 2019 and remained in single digits till the pandemic hit in March 2020 is now 40.4%. It is not only the individuals and households who are adversely affected by the depression of the city. For us at the Minister of Finance, the depreciation of the city seriously affects our ability to effectively manage our debt. Indeed, our stock of debt has increased by 93 billion Ghana cities this year alone due to the depreciation of the cities since the beginning of 2022. Even as the state struggles to raise sufficient revenue, high inflation will eat away the already meager wages of the average Ghanaian. The lesson from this relapse in macroeconomic stability makes us even more determined as your government to permanently restructure and transform this economy and build resilience. Mr. Speaker, we have been honest with Ghanaians about the economic challenges that the country is facing. His Excellency the President pointed out that never have so many malevolent forces come together in a perfect storm to so dramatically impact our lives. The current challenges on the back of two difficult years since March 2020 have really tested our people and our resolve. We empathize greatly with all Ghanaians for the undue pressures this has placed on their livelihoods. We want to commend all of you for your forbearance during these difficult times. We are confident though that together and of God on our side, we will turn things around. On behalf of His Excellency the President, let me assure all Ghanaians that government is working to change this negative narrative and demonstrate our resilience as a people and our ability to rebuild for a better future. We have demonstrated this many times in our country, but more recently between 2017 and 2019, we have resolved that in the next two years, government will work with you all with a restless determination to turn around this economy. Mr. Speaker, in a few years, the Black Stars will be playing their first game in the 2022 FIFA World Cup tournament in Qatar, it is clear that we stand united as a nation behind our black stars. A successful passage of the 2023 budget, a successful conclusion of negotiations with the IMF and making Ghana's performance in Qatar 2022 the most successful. That is winning the cup not only for the country but for any African side on the World Cup stage. Well, I dare say bring this most challenging year to a very successful end. To this, Mr. Speaker, we pray, as the Bible says, we hold how good and pleasant it is. God's people live together in unity, for there God commands the blessings. Mr. Speaker, events since March 2022, the pervasive volatility of our world today in the vision of President Akufuado to reset our economy through industrialization. It our resolve to reset the economy and restore macroeconomic stability. But to do so, we need the support of the people of Ghana and the cooperation and approval of this parliament. Our goal now 
is to significantly enhance, significantly cut down the cost of running government, significantly expand local production, invest more to protect the poor and vulnerable, continue expanding access to good roads and technology, education and health for every Ghanaian everywhere in Ghana diaspora. Mr. Speaker, this budget is therefore anchored on a seven-point agenda aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and accelerating our economic transformation as articulate in the post-COVID-19 Program for Economic Growth, PCP. These comprise an agenda to one, aggressively mobilize domestic revenue, two, streamline and rationalize expenditures, three, boost local productive capacity, four, promote and diversify exports, five, protect the poor and vulnerable, six, expand digital and climate responsive fiscal infrastructure, and seven, implement structural and public sector reforms. To achieve these, there are three critical imperatives, successfully negotiating a strong IMF program, coordinating an equitable debt operations program, and African green investments. This will enable us to generate substantial revenue, create needed fiscal space for the provision of essential public services, and facilitate the implementation of the PCPEC program to revitalize and transform the economy. Mr. Speaker, we will undertake the following actions, initiatives, and interventions under the seven-point agenda. Two, aggressively mobilize domestic revenue will, among others, one, increase VAT rate by 2.5% to directly support our roads and digitalization agenda. Fast track the implementation of the Unified Property Rate Platform Program in 2023 and review the E-Levy Act and more specifically, reduce the headline rate from 1.5% to 1% of the transaction value as, a, as well as the removal of the daily threshold. To boost local productive capacity, we will, among others, cut the imports of public sector institutions that rely on imports, either for inputs or consumption, by 50%, and would work with the Ghana Audit Service and Internal Audit Agency to ensure compliance, support the aggressive production of strategic substitutes, including the list disclosed at the President's last address to the nation, support large-scale agriculture and agribusiness interventions, through the Development Bank of Ghana and ADB Bank, introduce policies for the protection and incubation of newly formed domestic industries to allow them to make the goods produced here competitive for local consumption and also for to promote exports or among others, expand our productive capacity in the real sector of the economy and actively encourage the consumption of locally produced rice, poultry, vegetable oil and fruit juice ceramic tiles, among others. To pursue efficiency in government expenditures will, among others, implement the government directives on expenditure measures, integrate procurement approval process with GIFMIS to ensure that projects approved are aligned with budget allocation, review key government programs to reflect relevance, promote efficiency, and ensure that value for money is achieved in all sectors, including OGM, and review the efficiency of statutory funds. To implement structural and public sector reforms, who, among others, import a debt limit, who, among others, impose a debt limit on non-concessional finance, and take major structural reforms in the public sector by reviewing the operations of 36 state-owned enterprises, eight special purpose vehicles, 90 joint venture companies, 38 regulatory institutions, 60 statutory bodies, and six subvented organizations. Enforce compliance with legal and regulatory framework on foreign exchange, initiate measures to overhaul the tax structure and extractive industry, expand the gold purchase program by the Bank of Ghana to support foreign exchange reserve accumulation promote an LBMA certified gold refinery in Ghana, and promote local currency stability. To safeguard social protection programs, who among others, expand social protection programs such as LEAP, school feeding, 
and NHIS for the vulnerable and so excluded. Mr. Speaker, last year I presented our plan to get us back to pre-pandemic macro stability and growth levels. More importantly, I shared the President's strategy to improve the living standards of Ghanaians and address our central challenge, unemployment. The strategy was anchored on building a sustainable entrepreneurial nation through fiscal consideration and job creation. I'm happy to report that we have piloted the Youth Start program and launched the district level program. Mr. Chiga, we now have the commitment of our banks and development partners and are confident that the 10 billion Ghana CD program with more million jobs will be achieved in the next three years. We are now embarking on a journey to fundamentally reposition our economy with the post-COVID-19 program for economic growth, PCP, to be supported by the IMF, the World Bank, and other friendly sovereigns and the private sector, both domestic and international, as our blueprint. We are mindful that it will require broad-based contributions and sacrifices there will be cost to the fiscal adjustment that we intend to make in the coming years to sustain our stability, recovery, and eventual transformation. My pledge to this House, Mr. Speaker, is that there will be fiscal discipline, that every persuader that we ask the Ghanaian people and businesses operating in Ghana to continue to will be spent well. The challenges we face are daunting, but we must not lose sight of the greatest strength of being Ghanaian, resilience, entrepreneurial zeal, faith, courage, solidarity, and hope. I therefore ask all of us to play a constructive role in getting our nation fully back on track. Ours is a country with real prospects and the challenges notwithstanding. Ghana will rise again, and my faith is premised on the fact that a lot has achieved, especially over the course of the Fourth Republic and our policy as outlined in this budget to reset the economy. If supported, would ensure that, indeed, we have not wasted the current global crisis, but used it to make our economy stronger and the progress and prosperity of our people even more assured. Global economic development and outlook, economic growth and inflation. Mr. Speaker, the global environment is fragile and the outlook remains uncertain. Global economic activity in 2022 has slowed down more broadly and sharply than anticipated. Economic growth in emerging markets and developed economies is expected to slow down from 6.7% in 2021 to 3.7% in 2022, with a similar pattern expected in 2023. In Sub-Saharan Africa, growth is expected to slow down to 3.6% in 2022 and 3.7% in 2023, from 4.7% in 2021 due to low investments and a worsening trade balance. Overall, global inflation has risen driven largely by increases in energy and food prices. Inflation in emerging and developing economies has also risen from an average 5.9% in 2021 to 9.9% in 2022. The war in Ukraine has further heightened inflationary pressures. The exchange rates across the major international currencies depreciated rapidly by the end of the third quarter of 2022. As of 23rd November, the Ghana city depreciated cumulatively by 54.2% against the U.S. dollar. Similarly, the Ghana city depreciated cumulatively by 48.5% against the British pound. Mr. Speaker, I now present to this August House the provisional macroeconomic performance for the first three quarters of 2022 based on available data for the period. To better assess the macroeconomic development for the first three quarters of the year, permit me to restate the macroeconomic target set for 2022 as presented in the 2022 Media Fiscal Policy Review.
overall GDP growth of 3.7%, non-oil real GDP growth of 4.3%, and inflation of 28.5%, overall fiscal deficit of 6.6% of GDP, primary surplus of 0.4% of GDP, and gross international reserves sufficient to cover at least three and a half months of imports of goods and services. Mr. Speaker, data on the performance of the economy at the end of the third quarter highlights the continuous adverse impact of the challenging global and domestic, economy, domestic environment on the economy. As I indicated earlier, these developments have manifested through rapid exchange rate depreciation, high inflation, unsustainable debt burden, fiscal stress, and external sector shocks, among others, despite the monetary and fiscal policy interventions that were deployed in the first three quarters of the year. Mr. Speaker, the economic performance for the first three quarters of the year is summarized as follows. Mr. Speaker, provisional GDP data from Ghana Statistical Service published in September 2022 indicate that overall real GDP for the first half of 2022 recorded an average year-on-year -year growth of 3.4% in quarter 1, 2022, and 4.8% in quarter 2, 2022, respectively. Non-oil GDP expanded by 4.1% and 6.2% in the first and second quarters in 2022, respectively. The latest data indicates the headline inflation accelerated to 40.4% in October 2022 from 37.2% in September and 33.9% in August. The rise in October inflation was broad-based, driven by both food and non-food prices. The monetary policy rate has increased by a thousand basis points from 14.5% to 24.5% since the beginning of the year as the central bank deployed its monetary policy tools to anchor inflation expectations. Developments on the money market broadly showed rising interest rates across the yield curve. For example, the discount rate on the 91-day instrument has increased to 32.5% as of today from 12.5% in December 2021. The public debt-to-GDP ratio stood at 75.9% at the end of September 2022, at from 76.7% at the end of December 2021. Gross international reserves stood at 6.591 billion dollars equivalent to 2.9 months of import cover at the end of September 2022 from a stock position of 9.7 billion equivalent to 4.3 months import cover at the end of December 2022. Fiscal developments. Mr. Speaker, the 2022 media fiscal policy review revised the 2022 fiscal framework against the backdrop of unfavorable global and domestic developments. The fiscal deficit targets were revised to 6.6% of GDP, down from the 7.4% set in the 2022 budget. Similarly, the primary balance target was revised upwards to a surplus of 0.4% of GDP from a surplus of 0.1%. Lack of revisions in GDP projections adjustment in the expected yield from the 2022 revenue measures, adjustments to reflect the 30% discretionary expansion that cuts, adjustment in interest rates, and adjustment in allocation for compensation of employees to incorporate a 15% cost of living allowance, adjustment in exchange rate on account of higher depreciation, and adjustment to the benchmark crude oil price. Mr. Speaker, Provisional data on government fiscal operations for January to September 2022 shows a shortfall in revenue performance and a faster execution of expenditures. This resulted in an overall budget deficit of 41.7 billion, 7% of GDP, against a program deficit target of 36.7 billion, 6.2% of GDP. The corresponding primary balance for the period was a deficit of 9.6 billion or 1.6% of GDP against a deficit target of 5.8 billion CDs, 1% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, total revenue and grants amounted to 
2.4 billion, 11% of GDP, compared with a target of 67.3 billion, 11.4% of GDP, and the 49.1 billion, 10.7% of GDP recorded in the corresponding period in 2021. The outturn for total revenue and grants represents a shortfall of 2.8% compared to the period's target and year-on-year -year growth of 33.2%. The shortfall in revenue stems from the less robust performance recorded in all the revenue handles for the period. Mr. Speaker, domestic revenue for the period amounted to 64.6 billion, 10.9% of GDP, falling below the target of 66.5 billion, 11.2% of GDP by 2.9%. The outturn, however, represent a year-on-year -year growth of 34% and constituted 98.8% of revenue and grants. Mr. Speaker, total expenditure including arrears, clearance and discrepancies for the period amounted to 109.4 billion, 18.5 of GDP above the target of 103.9 billion, 17.6% of GDP by 5.2%. Compensation of employees amounted to 27.2 billion Ghana cities, 4.6% of GDP, 2.9% below the budgetary provision of 27.9 billion, 4.7% of GDP. The wage bill constituted 91.3% of the total compensation and amounted to 24.7 billion. Interest payments for the period amounted to 32.1 million, 5.4% of GDP against the target of 30.9 billion, 5.2% of GDP, reflecting the higher cost of borrowing and the adverse impact of the currency depreciation on external interest. Domestic interest payments constituted 78% of total interest payments for the period. Mr. Speaker, the fiscal operations for the period resulted in an overall budget deficit of 44 billion Ghana cities, 7.4% of GDP, against a target of 36.7 billion, 6.2% of GDP. The corresponding primary balance for the period was a deficit of 11.9 billion, 2% of GDP, against a deficit target of 5.7 billion, 1% of GDP. The fiscal deficit for the period was financed mainly from domestic sources amounting to 37.5 billion, 6.3% of GDP, accounting for 85.2% of the total financing. Foreign financing for the period amounted to 6.5 billion, 1.1% of GDP, and accounted for the remaining 14.8% of the financing. Public debt developments. January to September 2022. Mr. Speaker, provisional debt data as at end September 2022 shows a significant increase in Ghana's public debt largely due to exogenous factors. The end September 2022 provisional figures indicate that total gross public debt stood at 467.4 billion Ghana cities, 48.9 billion U.S. dollars, representing approximately 75.9% of GDP. The domestic debt component is 195.7 billion Ghana cities, which is 31.7.8% of GDP, whilst the sternal is 271.7 billion Ghana cities, representing 44.15% of GDP. The increase in the domestic debt is larger on account of rising interest costs. Domestic debt as a share of total public debt reduced from 51.6% in 2021 to 41.9% as at end 72. Mr. Speaker, the external debt as a percentage of the total debt stock is 58.1% as end September 2022. The sharp growth in the external debt stock is largely driven by the depreciation of the local currency, the depreciation of the Ghana CD added 93.9 billion to the external debt stock. Overall debt accumulation increased from 20.7% in 2021 to 32% in 
as at end September 2022, reflecting the impact of the depreciation of the Ghana CD on the external debt side. Mr. Speaker, the external sector performance in the outlook will depend largely on the quick resolution of the Russian-Ukraine war and the outcome of research and fears in advanced economies. The thrust of the stream of the Sena sector will focus on rebuilding the Sena buffers enough to cover at least three and a half months of imports of goods and services cushioning the economy against adverse Sena shocks. This will be underpinned by, among others, bilateral support and strong remittance inflows. Mr. Speaker, the Bank of Ghana will continue to monitor inflation development and response appropriately to contain price pressures. Monetary policy will focus on using the monetary policy rate to, among others, contain inflation pressures. Since August 2022, the Bank of Ghana has successfully been working with the mining firms, international oil companies, and their bankers to purchase all foreign exchange arising from the voluntary repatriation. Update on Ghana's engagement of the fund for a fund-supported program. Mr. Speaker, since government announced the engagement with the International Monetary Fund for a supported program on 1st July 2022, we have made substantial progress. The fund assured government of a strong commitment and support in these difficult times. Mr. Speaker, government and the IMF have agreed on program objectives, a preliminary fiscal adjustment path, debt strategy, and financing required for the program to be in line with the government's post-COVID-19 program for economic growth. The PCPEC is government's blueprint to restore macroeconomic stability, promote debt sustainability, sustain economic recovery, and support structural reforms. Mr. Speaker, guided by the medium-term policy objectives, the following macroeconomic targets are set for the medium term 2023 to 2026. Overall real GDP growth as an average rate of 4.3%, non-oil average growth of 4%, inflation back to within the target band of 8 plus or minus 2%, and a primary balance and comm commitment basis to average 0.8% of GDP in 2023, to 2026, and gross international reserves to cover at least four months of imports. Mr. Speaker, based on the overall macroeconomic objectives and the medium-term targets, the following macroeconomic targets are set for the 2023 fiscal year. Overall, real GDP growth of 2.8%, non-oil growth of 3%, and December inflation rate of 18.9%, primary balance on commitment basis of 0.7%, and gross international reserves to cover not less than 3.3 months of imports. Mr. Speaker, on resource mobilization for 2023, total revenue and grants is projected at 143.9 billion Ghana cities 18% of GDP and is underpinned by permanent revenue measures, largely tax revenue measures amounting to 1.35% of GDP as outlined in the revenue measures. Mr. Speaker, total expenditure, including clearance of arrears, is projected at 205.4 billion or 25.6% of GDP. This estimate shows a contraction of 0.3 percentage points of DGP in primary expenditures, commitment basis, that is, compared to the projected outturn in 2022, and a demonstration of government's resolve to consolidate its public finances. Mr. Speaker, the following projections underpin the resource allocation for 2023. Compensation of employees is projected at 44.9 billion, 5.6 percent of GDP, Use of goods and services also projected at 8 billion, 1% of GDP. Interest payments is projected at 52.6 billion, 6.6% of GDP. Grants and other government units is estimated at 30.1 billion, 3.8% of GDP 
capital expenditure is, expect, is projected at 27.7 billion, 3.5 percent of GDP. Mr. Speaker, other expenditures mainly comprise an energy sector levies, transfers, and energy sector payment shortfalls is estimated at 26.7 billion Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, based on the estimates for the total revenue and grants and total expenditures, including arrears clearance, the overall budget balance to be financed is a fiscal deficit of 1.5 billion, equivalent to 7.7 percent of GDP. The corresponding primary balance, the deficit of 8.9 billion, equivalent to 1.1 percent of GDP. Mr. Speaker, I wish to notify you the budget items such as interest payments, amortization and financing will be adjusted accordingly once government's debt management strategy and financing to be provided by international partners in the context of the fund supported program have been finalized. Revenue measures. Mr. Speaker, government has consistently indicated its intention to improve the revenue collection effort by leveraging technology to enhance tax administration, identify and register taxable persons, and improve tax compliance. Mr. Speaker, government has received several proposals for review of the electronic transfer levy and is working closely with all stakeholders to evaluate the impact of the levy in order to decide on the next line of action, which would include revision of the various exclusions. As a first step, however, the headline rate will be reduced to 1% of the transaction value alongside the removal of the daily threshold. To this end, the income tax regime will undergo reforms to, among others, review the upper limits for vehicle benefits and introduce an additional income tax bracket of 35%. Mr. Speaker, on expenditure measures will also be pursued to support the fiscal consolidation process in this regard it is proposed that government will reduce the threshold on earmark funds from the current 25% of tax revenue to 17.5% of tax revenue, migrate all earmark funds onto the GIFMIS platform and ensure they use the GIFMIS platform to process all their revenue and expenditure transactions, continue the 30% cut in the salaries of the President, Vice President, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, MMDCEs, and political office holders, including those of state-owned enterprises, whilst also ensuring efficiency at the OGM. Also want to place a cap on salary adjustment of SOEs to be lower than negotiated base pay increases on single spine salary structure for each year. Fiscal contingency planning. Mr. Speaker, given the uncertainties about the macroeconomic environment, Government stands ready to deploy additional tools if fiscal outturns require further interventions. On the revenue side, some of the measures that we identify for the medium-term revenue strategy being designed by government and in the context of the fund program could be implemented early on. On the spending side, MDA's budget allocations for goods and services or domestic capes will be strictly controlled by the quarterly budget allotment system. Mr. Speaker, the present economic challenges have heightened the need to transform our economy through a renewed focus on boosting local capacity for increased export promotion to expand job creation while protecting the vulnerable. Government is therefore taking active steps to address the impact of these economic shocks on Ghanaians through the seven-point agenda to restore macroeconomic stability and accelerate our economic transformation as articulated in the post-COVID-19 program for economic growth. Mr. Speaker, on developing local capacity for production, as I've already indicated, Ghana's heavy dependence on imports places tremendous pressures on the city, ground favorable balance of payments position. On average, Ghana's imports bill exceeds $10 billion annually and is accounted for by a diverse range of items that include iron, steel, aluminium, sugar, rice, fish, poultry, palm, oil, cement, fertilizer, pharmaceuticals, fruit juices, and even toilet roll and toothpicks.
We currently have the capacity as a country to locally produce items that account for about 45% of the value of our annual imports. These include rice, fish, sugar, poultry, cement, pharmaceuticals, jute bar, computers, etc. To this end, government will target these products for import for um, export promotion by supporting the private sector.